Very excited for this next interview as uh, it is our first time getting to speak with the new head man for LSU basketball as uh, Scott Woodward makes the switch and Matt McMahon is now the head coach of your LSU basketball Tigers. First off, coach, thank you so much for coming on air, carving out some time. I know it's a very busy time for you and I'm going to start with a question you've had to answer a million times already, the ground zero question, the basic question, and that is, what attracted you to LSU, given you know imposing saying you know impending sanctions, as well as the fact that you're probably going to have to start over from nothing with the roster that ends up being true? What made you take on this challenge, Coach? Hey, thanks for having me on. It's awesome to be here. Uh, just a great honor for me to be the head basketball coach at LSU. So, you know, for me, I think just the the LSU brand to me is one of the the most recognized names in all of sports and the fan base the passion here obviously the sec being the best league in the country right now uh we're all great draws for me uh before i was a college basketball player before i was a college basketball coach i'm a college basketball fan and growing up my favorite player was chris jackson uh, i was in knoxville tennessee when he scored 49 points against Allen houston and the balls back in 1990 hell yeah and uh i've just always uh, loved LSU basketball and the program. Uh, obviously, like like any program in, in college basketball in 2022, there are challenges when you take over new jobs. And uh, I just embrace that, and I'm thankful for the opportunity uh, to get to move this program forward. Coach, you just wrapped up uh, your staff as well. I know the staff just got announced there. Kind of what was some of your sales pitch to the staff that you brought to Baton Rouge? Well, I think for me, obviously, the number one thing is always recruiting uh, when you're hiring a staff uh, and the importance there and and really blessed with the group we were able to put together. But then as I work from there, I'm huge on player investment and player development. Uh, I want guys who are going to live in the gym with their players, uh, invest in their growth and development, not only on the court, but off the court as a man. Uh, I love having family people uh, leading our program. Uh, that are going to mentor our players and not only have great success while they're here, uh, but prepare them for life after LSU uh, to go out and have great opportunities and then have great success in those opportunities. Uh, so thrilled with the staff we were able to put together. Uh, you know, as far as the assistants go, bringing Casey Long uh, with me from Murray State, uh, who is uh, born in Louisiana, a native of the state. Uh, had a great college career and just one of the best I've ever been around at impacting people and building relationships. Uh, Cody Topper, the lead assistant at Memphis, uh, is a guy with great NBA ties, uh, was player development director for the Phoenix Suns, was, was instrumental in Devin Booker's development, and he's been a G League head coach, obviously experienced in recruiting high-level players there at Memphis. Uh, and then Ronnie Hamilton's a guy I kind of came up in the business with. I've always had great respect for him. Uh, he's had success at every level. He's coached at Houston, Tulane, uh, re- most recently at Ole Miss. Uh, so all high-energy uh, guys that are unbelievable in their relationships with players, and I know we're going to help us move this program forward. Uh, talking to new LSU head basketball coach Matt McMahon here on Off the Bench. Very excited, Coach. Thank you again for coming on. Uh, okay, let's stick with the recruiting pitches then, because what is the message – that you're selling to recruits right now, and 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 obviously not just high school recruits, but you know you got some guys coming over from Murray State. Really, you got guys coming over from all over the country. So, what what is the message? And then, in terms of like a two parter, how are y'all? How do y'all scout the transfer portal? Like, how, how do you stay on top of something yeah. that 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 is that wide and deep? That's a great question. I'll start with the first part. I think opportunity number one opportunity to come in and make an impact uh, at a great basketball program here at LSU, play in in front of unbelievable fans. Uh, The opportunity to be at a program of this caliber uh, is is where you start. And then for us, we've always prided ourselves in the player development piece, uh, helping players get to the NBA uh, and and advance their career, uh, I think is really important. And so now we're able to, to take that same process that's that's been very successful to us and now you add in all the resources you have here at LSU uh, from the nutrition center to the rest and recovery tools 
uh, to charter flights, you name it. Yeah. Uh, you have everything you need here uh, to get to where you want to go uh, if you're an aspiring professional basketball player. Uh, I think for the portal, uh, the challenge is it's uh, kind of like speed dating. Uh, it's not the same recruiting process where you, you start in as a sophomore or junior in high school and build the relationship. Uh, things happen fast. So I think you have to be very thorough, uh, number one, in your character evaluation of the player. Uh, what type of teammate are they? Uh, I think we all can recognize who can play and who can't. Uh, but then, you know, we have a, a very detailed process for how we break down video and go through and see who's going to fit uh, what we're trying to do here at LSU. Coach, uh, we're two former players, and we know like what the player-coach relationship means. And I want to ask you this question because you've got two of your players from Murray State that are now coming to LSU. They're following you to LSU. And as a coach, I know that has to mean a lot to you for your players to go from Murray State, follow you down here to LSU, and have this new challenge with you. Oh, it does. I mean, the player-coach relationship, as you both know, it's, it's the most rewarding part of this profession. And I understand you know, we have a great platform here. You have to win games and you have to win championships to maintain and keep your platform. Uh, but at the end of the day, it, it's about those relationships with the players. And the way we do it, it becomes family, and that's family forever. And, and we're going to continue to do that here. Uh, I'm honored that Justice Hill and, and Trey Hannibal, uh, you know, when they went into the portal, I'm sure you saw their list, uh, you know, yep. the value of, yep. of players who have produced. I mean, those are two guys who produced at a high level on a team that went 31-3 and three this year and uh, you know, was five minutes from going to the Sweet 16. So their value in this market is extremely high. Uh, you know, had offers from all over the country uh, that they enjoyed their experience playing for us. Uh, they continued. They were happy with their development as a player, and they were happy with their development as men, that they wanted to come and join us here at LSU means the world to me. I think that's what coaching's all about. Uh, yeah, it, it's definitely a ringing endorsement, Coach. Um, how do you deal with expectations, right? Because that is a, lo a lot of times. I mean, that is the thing, right? That is the thing that determines a a, a fan base's temperature towards their head coach and whatnot. What is your view on like year one expectations? How do you process them? How do you translate that to your team? I, I'm. It's a great question. I'm. I'm very big on process. I mean, I think that's so important. Uh, and I know you hear all these cliches and coach speak get thrown out, trust the process, all those type things. Uh, but I, I really do believe in that, you know, yep. control what you can control, mm -hmm. uh, put your head down and get to work. I've yep. never one time in my career gone into a season and said, our goal is to win 24 games or our goal is to, every team wants to win every game. <laughs> every team goes into the season wanting yep. to win the championship. <laughs> I mean, not, not one team's ever said, I hope we finish ninth next year. And so, you know, I think, uh, you know, a lot of teams will waste time setting these, these goals. Everyone wants to win. So it's more about the process of how you go about what you do on a daily basis to max out your team. And so I always just go into the, every season with the same goal from a basketball standpoint, and that's to max out our team and become the best team we're capable of being. And, you know, the results will take care of itself. The score will take care of itself, so to speak. Uh, and so that's how we always approach it. And we'll continue to do this, do the same here. Uh, trust me, I'm a competitor. I want to win. Hey, yeah. You know, and, and everyone in our program is going to want to win. Uh, but I think it's more about how you go about those processes, your daily preparation, your investment, your time, uh, all those things that will impact winning at the end of the day. Coach, last one for me. Give us a look at the schedule. Like, what's up on the schedule? Like, where do you go from here? How do you continue to build this roster? And when do you kind of start to get together and figure out maybe what the identity of this next year's LSU basketball team will look like? As you know, every team's got a different identity. Right. I think you'll see the identity start to form when we, when we are able to complete the roster here and, and we start our summer workouts at the end of May. Uh, and that's where we'll start our team building uh, and, and all those type things. But for now, you know, I, I think this is college basketball in 2022 is you have to be prepared, especially when you take over a new job. Roster management uh, becomes the number one most important thing that you have to do. And, you know, it's, it's great for players. I, I'm all for it. Uh, you know, I think the transfer portal is something that's it's an adapt or die yeah. type deal. 
you know, whether you like it or not, uh, you better embrace it because it's here to stay. It's not going anywhere. Uh, you know, I'm thankful that players have the, the opportunity to move as they see fit uh, w- without penalty, with that one-time exception. And I uh, certainly wish, you know, all the players that are in the portal here, I wish them all well. I'm happy for them and their families. And, but we're excited to get people here who want to be a part of the future of LSU basketball. Yep. And so that's our, our daily commitment right now is uh, continuing to build the roster, not just with the right players, but the right people too. And I think that's, that's got to be an important part of, of how we build it here. Uh, Coach uh, McMahon, can't thank you enough for coming on this morning. I know you have to go. you got a million things to do. We'll definitely be talking in the future. <laughs> I have about a million more uh, questions to ask you, but – Thank you. Uh, congratulations. You know, we're, we're in this thing for the long haul. And, uh, yeah, man, looking forward to uh, talking again soon. Yeah, thanks so much. I look forward to being on here often with you and, and talking about LSU basketball. And once this roster management piece gets settled down, yeah. I can't wait to get out in the community and get to some of these yeah. spring sporting events and, and be a part of this special place. It's really and truly an honor for us to be here. Hell yeah, man. It's awesome. Appreciate it, Coach. Uh, thank Coach, Coach Matt McMahon, yep. new, head, so much. new head coach of LSU basketball. Uh, yeah, you know, kind of. Look, man, I, I, I know he keeps talking about, and you can tell he's almost like apologetic or, or, or defensive over this idea of like, you know, I know I'm talking in cliches, but that's the funny part about cliches. Like, a lot of times they are such for a reason because it does represent some sort of homespun wisdom, right? Like, like the move, the chains, one snap right. and clear. Yeah. Like these are ones that these are these are things that are said to you constantly, but they have value. Put the blinders on. Focus on the task at hand. You may roll your eyes when you hear that, but like everything else that you kind of roll your eyes at, that people tell you over and over again, a lot of times it ends up being true, right? I mean, yeah. how many times did you hear things when like your wife was pregnant for the first time? You had your first kid, like oh, just wait till this. Oh, they grow up so fast. Right. Oh, they, and you roll your eyes, but then you experience. You're like oh, wait, they're right. And then you find yourself one day telling. The next generation, the exact same thing. I, so I t- I'm a believer, man. We'll see. I can tell you from from my experience so far with uh, some of the new head coaches that LSU's brought in, they're all incredibly organized. They have a purpose and a plan every single day to attack that day with that plan, and they stick to that plan. Mm-hmm. Not to say like you can't be a, a great coach if you're not, but it's just more times than not, the person who has that plan and sticks to it and doesn't start yeah. to go away from it, you're going to be more successful and you're going to be more consistent. Like when I go out and I watch football practice, like there's a plan. And if you deviate from that plan, they don't deviate with you. They say, no, we're not doing that. That's not who we are. Because if we don't get it in the spring, we're not going to get it when we're playing, you know, on the road in college station. Right. You know what I'm saying? So like, this is the plan. This is what we're going to do. And kind of same thing with Jay Johnson. When we have him on same thing, our first chance didn't talk to catch him. Uh, Coach McMahon there, Coach Mulkey. I mean, there is a plan. There's a purpose. There's a reason why we're doing everything. And the organizational skills of the new coaches here has been really impressive to me so far. Yeah, and yeah, I, I talked uh, yesterday on uh, – I was with Childers and Chris Budden, and we were kind of talking about that where I was basically saying, yeah, look, uh, the, the Brian Kelly is incredibly process-oriented, right? And – I, you know, and then they brought up Nick Saban, right? Whenever you use that word, of course you do. But there, that's you know, there's it's there's a reason that's a common denominator. And yes, every coach says they're process oriented, and every coach wishes to be process oriented. But you've seen it time and time again. You saw it at the end of the O era; they lost their way, lost the process. And so, it's, it's saying it is one thing, doing it is another. Brian Kelly's track record has proven that that is a process oriented man. I think that you could say up to this point that Matt McMahon has done this, but this will be the ultimate test of his own process. How do you evolve it? What do you keep? What do you shirk? And how do you make it continue to work for years and years and years? And it's going to be pretty fascinating to see. Um, So what total of talking McMahon more? Total of four players, I believe, have transferred in. You got a player from NC State, two from Murray State, one from Northwestern State. I think more coming from Murray State. uh, Just kind of reading between the lines there. And obviously, like, you're going to continue to add players. I mean, you're starting over. You're hitting reset. Like, we all know that. We've all already talked about the narrative. You'll have some players coming in from high school. You've already got one that was committed to you at Murray State coming to LSU, but they're not done yet. And he mentioned, like, like I'd love to be out in the community. I'd love to be going to baseball, yeah. softball games, and all the – we got to work on this roster. And when this roster's complete, then we'll move on. And, look, he had to get his coaching staff complete as well. That's why – that was the first question I asked him. Because, like – 
we always talk about selling LSU with what they have, you know, looming in the future about players, coaches as well. Coaches want to win. Coaches want to play in the postseason, right? So you've got to talk those coaches into coming to LSU as well. Yes, so that was yeah. a part of what he had to do that doesn't get talked about because it's not players. You had to get coaches to leave places like Memphis, like Ole Miss, to come to LSU with the future really kind of unknown. Yeah, I mean, if you know, you know, I'm and sure look, I know, that, I know money. Yeah, look, I know, I know. That, that I know hurt, look, hurt, money sure. helps. For I sure. understand that, but all of sure. y'all listen and know sports well enough <laughs> that we're we're all maniacs and we all have huge egos that are in these sports. Okay, what? we also want to win. What if when we asked him why he came here, he's like, I mean, what do you eight milli or eight years three milli? What do you mean? Easy my eight, eight years three milli a year? Come on. Yeah, you set to make, no to that? I think it was set to make half a million at Murray yeah, State. Yeah, this is six times. That's a 6X. I'd be crazy not to come. 